On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are back with the S10 build and we are running out of time. But I wanted to address a few of the snags for uh, if you're swapping your LS10, well, LS10, uh, putting an LS in your S10 at home, these are some things you need to watch out for. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jargo, and like I said, the S10 build is flying along because we have to be ready for LS Fest in um, 17 days, 17 days, and this is a very partial truck, very incomplete. But there are some big issues you need to watch out for when you're building your LS swapped S10. Like I said, you probably don't even want to do this without these things. So, of course, Holly sells a full kit, and we are running Holly's full kit. That kit comes with uh, your engine mounts down inside here. It comes with your transmission mount. It comes, there's a cross member to swap out. Um, the transmission moves a little bit and it lets you run a dual exhaust, true duals through this thing with Holly's cross member. So that's a pretty cool setup. You probably want all of those parts. And there are a few other things that are going to get in your way and you'll probably want to address those. So Holly also sells a modified version of the heater box, which we're gonna install today. Here's that updated heater core box. It's got a cool hooker logo in it. It looks very nice. It's got the provision for your uh, blower motor resistor right there that has uh, inserted nuts and all that cool stuff. Anyway, this basically just gets rid of that bevel on the back and makes the back of what's really the evaporator box, but you know, the blower motor box, it's all one big assembly here. Uh, it lets you get a bunch of clearance by flattening out this edge here and moving this angle back a little bit. So this is going to let you run your coils. If you look right here, you can see that our factory coil packs would not fit with this uh, EVAP box there. But with this one, it should solve our problem and we ought to be able to run. Well, we're not even running factory coils. We're running a crazy billet setup and it needs a lot of room. Hopefully it fits with this thing. So that uh, is one of the things that you'll need to address. And the other issue you're going to run into is nothing will fit on the driver's side. So, I mean, I don't even need to put the coils in there for you to see that there is zero clearance between the valve cover. I mean, maybe, maybe a half inch, but you can't actually fit anything in there between this gigantic junk brake booster and the valve cover. So you wanna get rid of this. There are a lot of options for this. A bunch of people make different ways for you to solve the booster problem. Uh, Motion Raceworks, of course, has one. Chase Base has one. And they're all uh, power brake deletes. They get rid of the booster altogether and you go to an old manual uh, brake master, which we don't want to do. We want power brakes because it's nice to drive like that. So we're going to go to a 1999, what is it? Malibu. So we are going to throw this piece of junk in the trash and get a much smaller booster that will give us all the room we want from a 1999 Malibu or a Cavalier. Uh, a bunch of them use the same one. It has the same um, bolt pattern for the master. And the only thing we need to change is the brake rod from the pedal inside. So let's run to O'Reilly's and pick that up. And also don't forget, when you're buying your Holly swap kit, you need to buy this steering shaft because this lets you clear your aftermarket headers. Oh, you also want hooker's headers. <laughs> so those are the things that you basically have to have to make this stuff fit unless you want to extensively modify your frame and everything. I mean, you could just cut all this out and stick an LS in there, but I want it to be nice and drive nice. So we're going all the way with this thing. Steering shaft is key. Holly sells that. It's uh, all part of the swap kit. And obviously, like I said, order those headers. They don't exactly show up, but I'll try to put a link for those in the description below. And I'll throw a link to this at O'Reilly's in the description as well. All right, we've got the S10 outside. Yes, there is a super annoying train. I'm sorry about that. But we're gonna blow out the cab real quick and then Eric's gonna grind uh, all the rust out of here. There's a little bit of surface rust on the floor and we're gonna bedliner the inside of this thing. <laughs> So all you have to do is run to O'Reilly's and tell me you need a brake booster for an old 99 Malibu and that should get you on the right track. I called a little bit ago and ordered it, so hopefully it's here. Also, we get to bring back our tools that we borrowed. What is happening? Look at this, we got a whole army of people with all these parts we've got. So we've got our tensioner for the belt. Dylan's got the brake booster. Jake's got a complete Honda Insight rebuild kit right there. <laughs> Engine in a bottle. <laughs> I thought you were going with, uh, I broke my tire. My tire is broken. All right, here's our new tensioner. 
This is the tensioner for the LS3 Camaro. Let me tell you guys, if you can get away with the truck accessories, more, more solid info for building your LS swapped S10. If you can use the truck accessories, they are pennies on the dollar compared to the stuff for the Camaro. The Camaro water pump, like I said, is nearly 300. This is like 100 just for, I mean, the one for the truck's like $26. But for the Camaro, you know, triple all your costs. Uh, but anyway, the gates, tensioner for the Camaro, 39334. We are gonna swap that onto the pump right now. And we've got our new belt, 79 inch belt. Uh, yeah, 79 inch, exactly, impressive. Uh, our 80 inch was a little over 80 inch and obviously it didn't fit. Although, I think it might fit once uh, we go to this gigantic tensioner compared to the truck one. So, we're gonna take a lot of room out just with that. Let me grab an impact and zip off this broken one. Tensioner delete. Looks like these bolts have to be changed. Yep, bolts are wrong. Just stack up some washers. Yeah, just like 50 <laughs> washers. <laughs> All right, we're off to find new bolts. All right, we cleaned up some fresh bolts after we found some that'll actually fit this thing. And now we are ready to mount this thing up. The uh, bolts with the shank on them were way, way too long. So these ones should be perfect. What about the bolts with the fur? The bolts with the fur. With the fur. That's all you got? Yep, I'm fully tight. Too short. Too short. <clears throat> we're going back. 81. Going to 81. Okay, ready? Go. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back off. Boom. Seems like we have an accessory belt. Seems right. Yep. So yeah. what we end up with? Uh, 80... 81 and 5 eighths? 81 and 5 eighths. Yeah. That, that next closest size is 81 and an eighth. I don't think that would have got us there. Yeah, it probably would have been a little shorter. Anyway, I know there are concerns about belt wrap. I think the belt wraps just fine. We've ran plenty of other setups like this. Obviously, there's no horsepower robbing components in here. Power steering is very easy. The alternator is probably pulling a little bit more power down. But also in this thing, we're not going to be pulling a bunch of amperage because there's not going to be a lot of electronics. So overall, I'd say top to bottom, this is an easy setup to run and belt wrap will not be an issue. I wouldn't expect any slippage at all. Um, the next thing we need is a thermostat housing. We don't have that. But we got this all wrapped up and while we were outside with the truck a few minutes ago, cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. The cowl was full of leaves and trash, like uh, you know the usual um, mix of yard stuff that just turns into a nasty mud. We cleaned out all that. We cleaned out all the drains for the cowl. Uh, we cleaned off the dash and we got underneath here. And inside we wire wheeled the entire floor to get it prepped for the bed liner and it looks much better. There's no loose stuff on the floor anymore. We're ready for the bed liner, but of course it's raining outside now. So let's try to get this brake booster in. Wait, there is an issue. We have to paint the brake booster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, The brake booster came as just uh, standard stamped metal. That is not okay for being inside this truck. So we're gonna have to paint that new one and I'm gonna get in here and get this one out. I think it takes a 17 mil or a 15 mil for these four bolts inside here. They're in the cab, of course. Hey, what's part number on that bad boy? 54-71290. There you go, that's exactly what you need to LS swap your S10 and make everything fit. And then you need a workbench. You need a uh, pro whatever. <laughs> I forgot what it's called already. The multi, multi, multi pro, pro multi pro tailgate. Look how much room that little thing buys you. You can put whatever you want in the engine bay. The other option is of course Hydro Boost. A lot of guys do convert to Hydro Boost that will work and people say it feels amazing on the S10. Um, then you can just run another line from your power steering pump and you're good. So that will save you a ton of space. It's just a bigger master. Or you go to an unpowered brake system. Um, but we also, we did one on the rolls that used a booster that was only like this big, like five inches or something. Tiny little thing. You can really do whatever you want in here, but that one just bolts in. The bolt patterns are the same for the master and the inside of the truck. So if you want to save a lot of time, there's your answer. Yep, monsoon. Monsoon. <laughs> Go out there and run around. Nah, I'm good. I built myself a little creeper here so I can lay in here without getting all dirty before we paint it. And now we got to pull down the uh, under dash plastics. Okay, I got everything out. Yeah making a mess, huh? All this gross. <laughs> I heard so much, Paul. Oh, it's probably all rat stuff, too. Uh, or goat. Ugh. What is that? I thought this was gonna be like a normal dash removal thing. Uh, Ugh, I here. It is nasty. Um, all right. 
Well, now I think I need to get a vacuum in here and clean all this up. There's so many cut wires and butt cramps and stuff like that inside of here. Kind of incredible. But the screws you need to take out are right here underneath this flap. If you can see that, uh, there's the ones at the very top are going to be incredibly hard, but the bottom ones aren't too bad at all. Uh, you'll need to pull the rubber back and then you can get to the nut that's underneath. It's definitely not an easy job, but it can be done. Eric's removing the sound deadening there and it's gonna be easy to get to those bolts after that. Hey, look at that. It's basically uh, uh, impossible to get to those bolts without just yanking that out of there. So it's probably easier now. It's not very much, but. Enough to get some access. Well, it's, it's right above the steering column. Yep. And then you have the boot off of, that actually engages the brake booster from the pedal and that's in your way. Of course. It's all in your way. It's all in your way. Eric's in there pulling that brake booster and I am out here getting the heater box apart. It looks like you need a six to split this thing. You'd think it'd be a seven like GM loves to use, but a six is what these tiny little bolts are. You also need a 10 back there on the firewall. If you can see that bolt, that's kind of hiding out. And then there's of course some more down here underneath the box and they look like, it's tough to see that far back, but they're like sevens and a 10. So at least three different sockets to get this one plastic cover out of there. But we are about to get it. And to make this a little bit easier, and because we don't have AC right now, I'm just gonna plug all this off. I went ahead and broke all of this loose. And we'll pull the dryer out of here and get this line set out of the way. And I think that'll help us out quite a bit. The dryer is out of the way. And this should make getting to the EVAP slash heater box easier. We've got everything out of here. I don't know what's going on. Just a pro tip if you're gonna do this, do it before the engine goes in. Uh, we're not taking this engine back out. All right, we ended up taking the entire EVAP off of there and the blower motor. Uh, it all kind of comes out as an assembly, which lets you clear the direction we needed to go, which was away from the head. So now uh, there's a little rubber isolator. We had to cut the rubber isolator, but now everything's off. There's what's left of the old one going in the trash and here is the new one that buys us all of the clearance we wanted it goes in there just like so and all of a sudden we have clearance for our yeah it sits right there so that's tons of clearance for our coil packs there so that's going to work out very well um, honestly we don't need this at all because obviously we have no ac you can see the heat's already bypassed there so we could definitely bail on this but i wanted to get it in the build that was just something i planned on doing and it'll make it easy to put AC on the truck later if we decide to redo all the accessories. Holly includes a nice little note for you here that says 94 to 2004 S10s, you must cut these studs flush or the airbox won't fit. So here we go. That's good eating right there. This stuff just keeps flying in the car. Oh man, dude, just take the core out and we need to like blow that out with compressed air. That's hey, bad. Good enough. <laughs> we don't have compressed air. All out, compressed air machine broke. So your hooker evaporator core box there comes with some window welds so you can reseal this thing. If you've ever used this stuff before, you've probably installed windows in an extended cab or something like that. And now we are ready to install this thing. You can see I laid down a bead everywhere I needed to to seal this thing up. Put the uh, resistor pack back in it. And now, with a little bit of creative this and that, this should just drop right on. Close. There we go. And we'll do a test fit. It's the wrong side, I think. I think they're the same. I think these are totally reversed. They just flip over, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. It's a little tight, but it fits without having to do anything crazy like remote mounted coils. We'll have to put the spark plug wire on first and then go ahead and set all that in there. But we sure have room now, so that's awesome. We've got three of these bolts out and the fourth one is being a massive pain. Uh, it's a ratchet wrench only situation. My arms are tired. <laughs> I'm about halfway. You should have left it on there. Should it, we should just, now that we have get a gap, we should just get the sawzall in behind the brake booster and go down to three bolts, the proper amount of bolts for a boost. 
Why is it a twist off? Yeah, man, man, this is this will probably be the hardest part of the whole build. I hate twist off boosters, but I hate them less than this. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's out. Pull, pull, pull. Oh, hey, where'd the seal go? Did it go inside? <laughs> yeah, it broke. The whole thing's <laughs> toast. All right, well, that one's gone forever. Look at that. Yeah. Don't worry about how we did that. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, peanut butter. Um, we do have to cut the rod off and then put a, a couple tack welds on the other one to make them um, the same rod because the other one has a totally different end. Well, there you have it. Those are the things you need to know before you LS swap your S10. If you uh, do those couple simple things, it will help you out immensely and save you a ton of time. And if you watch the other videos in this series, you'll see how to do everything else. Uh, and how to do it really, really fast too. So we're down to about 16 days before we leave for LS Fest at this point. And hopefully in the next three days or so when the rest of the parts get here, we've got this thing running. So we still have to run fuel lines, run some cooling lines, get the front end put back together and stuff. But hey, we are getting close quickly. <laughs> that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. Welcome to Eric's YouTube channel. Sean Ross. Let's just say he clipped it. Clipped it. <laughs> Straight off the <laughs> Jake's going full supreme over there. Yeet. Supreme nacho cheese chalupas. Okay. You can't have both, I guess. It would just be supreme or nacho cheese. But, I mean, it's just terrible if you mix the two. Anyway. Um, the brake booster, it takes forever. Like 10 to uh, 38,000 times more than you would expect. Eric ruined his hands. I ruined my hands. Everyone's just bleeding and <laughs> dying at this point. Um, that brake booster change is an absolute nightmare. Um, Evap box, not that big of a deal. No, it took a long time to get this brake booster thing done. Should have been very simple. Um, I was excited about it being a four bolt until we found out the steering column needs to come down in order to actually do that or you can just hurt yourself doing it. So, you know, you, you pick how you want to do it. Drop the entire steering column, take the entire truck apart, or just sit under there with a wrench for a very, very long time. Sorry. could you say that again? No, <laughs> Sorry. I, I can't, I can't say it.